Well, it's time to get going. It's five minutes after the hour. And I think I have everything set up to uh, demonstrate this build of a high voltage power supply filter. My name's Mark, KA6WKE from uh, sunny Southern California on this fine Sunday afternoon. And this AMP project came about uh, from a good friend of mine sent me a, a desktop kilowatt amplifier oh probably 15 years ago and it sat on the shelf for uh, quite a while and after looking at it it was kind of more or less a uh, basket case so I stripped it apart for all the basic components you know the high voltage transformer cathode heater transformers uh, the other RF parts tuned input and things and uh, the tubes were still appear to be good and went from there. So <clears throat> the first part is building up the building up the high voltage board, and this is the high voltage filter board, and that's what this is. This was the original from uh, from the amplifier itself. I had um, removed all the old parts, and they because they saw better days. I think this amplifier was built probably sometime in the mid 80s, give or take. I'm still adjusting audio here. And this is not my normal voice either. I've been having a really bad cold the last couple of weeks. But anyways, I cleaned off all the old parts um, and the original uh, circuit board didn't have any type of tinning on it or anything along those lines. So I got that all cleaned up and did a manual tin with some solder. Uh, we'll talk some more about that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> after I took off all the parts, I just marked where the different capacitors go, the diodes go, and then the balancing resistors and so forth. Um, I don't have the 4 ohm 5 watt resistor for the meter. I can get that later. So <clears throat> let's talk about some tools and things. A lot of people are, uh, I should say a lot of people, but People that are new into home brewing and things aren't quite sure what what type of tools to, to use, and um, or should I do I have to buy the super expensive commercial, you know, quality type tools? Um, I have to for amateur use and hobbyists. I don't agree that you have to buy the expensive Excelite type brands or anything like that. Um, but you want a, a good quality that you that you can rely on that's not going to um, damage your uh, components and things when you're putting them in the board and getting them ready. So, for example, um, to get started you need, I, l I have handy uh, pair of scissors, plain old regular pair of scissors, um, a converted dental pick I use for holding parts down or making sure things are okay. And for mistakes, yep, we'll make them. A solder sucker, pretty easy to use. Um, for those who have never seen one, it's uh, you just push the plunger in, set it on the spot you want to remove your solder from, and hit the little black button, and it will pull your solder away. Okay, there are other ways to remove solder, and that's done with uh, solder wick. I have different sizes. So up in the left-hand corner, you'll see another little square with yellow, and that's for, um, that is for, whoop, there it is, for close-ups. So I can show you part numbers and things on different, on different components, um, and that's a, that's a, a solder wick, and you want to make sure you get the type of solder wick that has rosin in it. Okay, that'll help tremendously when you have to remove parts. So, um, looking at your tools, I use decent quality. Some are Snap-on brands. Some are actually horrible freight or Harbor freight, depending how you think about it. Um, and they've they've got decent quality tools that you can use. But um, one thing to make sure, since we're building through hole, this is a through hole. Uh, project, um, you're going to be bending a lot of leads on the different components and things. So, the one thing you don't want to use is a pair of pliers to help with it that are serrated. And the reason for that is if you 
grab it and bend it, um, you could notice that it actually, a little hard to tell there, but you can see right there where it scored the lead. And depending upon how it's mounted, that could create an area where of weakness and you don't want you don't want uh, you don't want that in your build so this power supply is gonna is going to um, roughly have an output of about I think 2400 volts DC and um, it's gonna power a pair of tetrodes which I'm new to I'm not used tetrode tubes before um, 4CX250B uh, type and I'll bring one in to show that's what they look like they're not real big um, they dissipate about 500 watts on the plate and this is what came in the amp you can't really see the writing on there but uh, this is what came in the amplifier originally and I have another pair around here somewhere that are brand new so after the after I strip the amplifier part, um, well back to tools actually. <coughs> so for for working on through hole equipment or parts, I use a flat type set of pliers. So that way when you make your bends on your leads, you're not putting any funny nicks in there or anything like that. That could cause a problem later on. Um, solder. Next thing about solder is uh, I prefer the lead type. Regular old <coughs> brand name tin lead solder. From This one's from MG Chemicals. I think I got it from Fry's. Um, and I also use um, a Kester 44 rosin which is pretty standard. It's been, this is, I've had this roll for like, I don't know, 20 years. <laughs> So, but they are two different sizes. Um, they, they're two different diameters. The MG is 16 gauge. And the, oops, get them both together. And the other one is 0 .034 inches. So this is the one I'll be using on, on the board today. The fat one. And I use these in... Uh, I'll be using the smaller one on some other boards that we have to build for this amplifier to use uh, for the cathode power and screen or uh, grid power supplies and things like that. They're called tetrode boards, um, and we'll do the next uh, next um, live stream on that. Or uh, actually, the next live stream will be testing this thing, so we'll we'll see how it goes. Anyways. <clears throat> need to get started. Um, essentially what this is going to be is a full wave bridge using uh, multiple diodes because of the amount of voltage that uh, we're anticipating. So in this case I've chosen the 1N5408. It's a nice a nice fat diode. Oops, I don't have that in the screen. Hold on a second. Oh no, I'll just flip back. It's a nice um, standard diode package. 1N5408. And looking at the data sheet, um, <coughs> it has all the basic things that you want uh, for a diode. Oop, wrong screen. Uh, um, so 5408. So it has a maximum reverse voltage of a thousand volts which isn't enough I know from testing the high voltage transformer puts out about 2200 volts AC uh, so how do we get over that part well we put diodes in series we'll put in this case we're gonna put four we could get away with three um, but I bought a hundred diodes for I think eight dollars so I'm gonna put four um, on each leg of the half 
full wave bridge so that way um, there's plenty of headroom uh, available on the device on these devices so uh, any if there's any type of you know high volt or voltage spike or something although the amp will have filtering on the AC input um, you just never know and you want to prepare prepare for the worst so we're gonna flip this over and let's see here get that kind of lined up so for some reason the camera isn't exactly focusing on the board I don't know what the deal is but maybe it's too translucent I'm not sure anyways the full wave bridge um, I do have a schematic I drew up and I don't have it on this machine so <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna take four of the resistor or I'm sorry four of the diodes and like I said I got I bought a <laughs> hundred of these things uh, and I, actually here's only about 50 of them uh, the other half went to a good friend of mine for his for his projects and what we're going to do is these all get installed like so okay now the thing is these are not going to be installed um, make sure I got these going and these are in series so you look for the the band I had that one in backwards not good yeah there we go uh, the band here should be on top on this one because they'll be in series. Um, actually, I'm doing three. Three will be fine. Okay, let's make this easier. If you're not following along, because I'm kind of confused myself, we want them to be like this. Right? All the bands are in series. Yes, that's right. Okay. Now I need to do about a quarter inch bend. Um, the reason for this is you don't want... The diodes like to have little air around them when they're operating. So we'll put a little bend in the end and slide it in. Stand it up. We'll do that for all of these. This is just to help the airflow. Uh, I think I said four, right? We'll do three. Three will be fine. put in all right this one's going to want to go in we'll turn that around in a minute so now flip it over and we're going to solder these down now the interesting thing about these live streams is there is no editing i don't have time to edit to make uh, a really good quality type video, how-to video. So whatever happens, happens. Mistakes are, can be made. If there are mistakes, then they get fixed. And I think the important part of learning how to build something is <coughs> working through the errors that come along with your project. Um, I've, I don't think I've ever had a project really work from the start except for a, possibly a, um, a uh, 
trivial type uh, project. So the next thing you'll need is a good soldering iron. And I prefer the Weller brands. I have an older WS, WESD51 that I use. Um, and for today, since we're going to be soldering some heavier type leads, we'll be using a pretty fat tip on this. Let's see. Yeah, come on, camera focus. Let's try the little one if I don't melt it. <laughs> So this is a pretty fat chisel chip tip that we'll use to solder to start soldering these diodes down. I'm still looking at the orientation, make sure I got it right. Something's telling me I don't. That looks right to me. So, um, so we'll go ahead and solder down the first leg. Now, when you're working on power supplies, be it high current, you know, low voltage type high current, the, don't be shy with your solder. You want to have a good amount of solder on there because it's going to either take a lot of current or higher voltages and make sure you know nothing's going to melt okay I don't know if you can see that let me get a little closer with the camera Alright, it's not focusing too well for some reason. So this move, this is a little bit of a cold solder joint. Just heat it back up. Let me get something to hold it real quick because it's pretty hot. There we go. I don't know why it, the camera just doesn't want to focus in on that. Okay. And now the last one in this string. Okay, so that's the first string, and you'll see they're about a quarter inch off the board, give or take. Nope, this middle one's backwards. Okay, the middle one's... Still looking at this again. No. Okay, the, the two outside ones are backwards. Always double check your work. We'll get that cleaned off here real quick. First, first uh, live stream and already desoldering things. That's okay. All right.
Give this a little more heat and it'll pull right out. Yeah, I just lifted the trace. Dang it. Okay, I've got a hundred of these things. So let's do a little sacrifice here. And then the middle one. Get out some some of that solder wick I showed earlier. Kind of clean up there. There we go. Bend this up like it somewhat straight. You can't believe I did that. Oh well, that's life. And that's why this isn't edited. This is. Or it's not going to be edited because these things happen. And this is the part. Yeah, I got 100 of these. I don't need to clean that one up. Let me pull two more off the bandolier two off the band like I remember to keep my hands under there I am totally drawing a blank on this for some reason. I don't know why. Ah, all right, I remember now. That was supposed to be four. I don't think I drilled the holes all the way out. That's not, these are way larger than the, uh, these are way larger than the other ones that came in. I have to redrill my PCB. I need the four in here like I thought. <coughs> so, yeah, I need four in here like I thought. I'm not going to be able to fit them all in there on this current, the way the board is currently drilled. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll skip the diodes for now. Let's move into, uh, we can do the capacitors and the balancing resistors for this one. Um, that's more in the middle. I'll, uh, it won't be hard for me to drill the board out. Um, when I'm ready. So here's the new, these are the old, 
Sprague Electrolytics that came with the amplifier. Very old, probably 80s, I think. And they all need to be replaced, every single one of them. Um, there was f five on this one, four or five. So ordering its modern equivalent, it's this size. So you can see <laughs> the newer technology uh, capacitors are definitely uh, for the same parameters, same values. It's uh, it's pretty amazing how uh, much smaller things are these days. So one one of them will go here on the board. Then we'll be laying out. Um, one of the balancing resistors will go there. So these are 180K 2 watt uh, metal oxide, I'm pretty sure metal oxide resistors. And what they do is after the diode stack, they, they help balance the input voltage and current across the, all the different capacitors. So that way you don't have one capacitor at a higher potential than, it, than the others. So the other thing to pay attention to is orientation. So these are nicely marked, and this is the minus end as the arrow points. Um, <coughs> if possible, what I like to do when I'm building things is to is to have everything right, what's called right reading. I call it right reading. So this is the top of the board. You want everything to read, for example, left to right, top to bottom. Now, in this case, we can't with the electroly the electrolytics in this plane because we have to observe the polarity. But resistors should be read left to right. Now, what about vertically? Uh, what about vertical parts? Vertical parts should read from top to bottom. So that way, when you're looking at your board. And you've you've got you know you, you have a mistake in there somewhere. Um, you want to be able to uh, not have to flip the board around all over the place trying to get all your parts in the right orientation. So that'll help you uh, put these things together. So what I like to do is for through hole parts, I like to start with uh, the components lower to the board first. Um, and the reason for that is, as you can tell, there's a big height difference between the capacitor and the resistor. Um, the resistor, um, on crowded boards, if you have taller parts on the board and then you need to solder in uh, parts that are small, much smaller in diameter, you risk sticking your soldering iron in there, possibly melting something, and you don't want to do that. So one of my favorite little tools for Bending, bending leads is this. This tool, it's called Comform 1. I don't know where I got it from. But essentially, it's a little it's a little tool that lets you put the you stick the, um, it's like a micrometer in a way. You put that in the tool, in the holes of your that you're going to mount the um, component in and then you can slip it in the jaws here and the little kind of you know make it even and bed the leads down nicely like that see how it bent the leads around nicely and you, it's nice and centered and then it can drop right on in and makes it look looks really nice it doesn't have sharp bends or anything now the thing about these um, resistors is they are going to carry some current through them a little and they'll generate a little bit of heat so we don't want them uh, flush with the board we're actually going to want them a little taller so let's try putting something underneath that'll stay put So I'm just looking for, oh, this might work quite possibly.
possibly this little circuit board might work. That's too high. That's too high, so I'm trying to find trying to find something sh a little shallower than that. Oh, I don't know. How about another resistor? That should work. Just like that. A um, little bit of electrical tape. And I'm not sure. I had right here. And this is what happens a lot when you're building is <clears throat> you set something down and then you got to go back and find it again. Because you didn't put it back in the same place you found it. So you spend time and I'm looking for my... Ah, oh, there it is. So we'll take a little bit of electrical tape to hold the component in place. Perfect. All right, now we can flip it over. Now that I do it correctly, let me double check that I make sure it's right reading. I forgot to check. Yes. Now you're all asking yourself, what about your last resistor? Yeah, there's that. We'll deal with that in a minute. Um, solder went somewhere. There it is. Get these all put down. Again, don't... Uh, actually, what I'm going to do with these is bend them over onto the board. Don't be shy with solder, remember. Move that cool off a little bit. So another set of tools that I use are uh, component flush mount, flush uh, component snippers. And they look like this on the blades. Very handy to have. You have three or four. Lead, excess leads off. And there we go. Oops, I don't go that way. There's one. So notice it's off the board. Fairly even. Um, so we can have some airflow around it. So let's do the same thing with R5. Where's my the R5? I've already measured. It's already. Well, it's not quite the same as R4. Now do the same thing here. Put it in the middle. Bend it around. It's right reading. And now we need something else. Here. That should hold it. Bend the leads over. Give it. Give it some more solder here. Again, don't be shy of solder. Cool off. There we go. All right. 
progress. Kind of straighten it up a little bit. There we go. A little bit shy, but good enough. Okay. We've got two more real close. R2, R3. Uh, what time is it here? Oh, already 40 minutes. <clears throat> I can only do an hour. I think that's about as long as my voice is going to hold out. Uh, what do I do with my package of resistors? Here we go. Yeah, these are the same, okay. One in the middle. Like that. Now right reading, so these this resistor, yeah would be top would be red top to bottom I'm going to bend them this time underneath the board like that and then the next one is same thing that all right same with this resistor bend the leads underneath so when we flip it over um, gravity will give us a hand They're about the same height. Close enough. Make some more bending adjustments here. Okay. Yep, that'll work. <coughs> Solder time. Oops. Heat it. There we go. Just like that. Net resistor. Yep, solder's getting short. Okay, push that down some more. piece and I got to work on a fume extractor that'll be one of my other projects here shortly I've got uh, got an idea to make a fume extractor out of an old cooler microwave blower and some hose so we can just trim this off oh actually that could have stayed that would have yeah this one can get trimmed off okay so is that it for the resistors? Nope, right there, R6. I knew there was one left over. Um, so now we got, you can see all the resistors are nicely off the board. Um, help with cooling while the amplifier is on. Put it back. Get my little this is a little too wide on this one, so it goes here. Um, pop it in like so. So it's even. Oh, 
Well, it's not very even. Let's fix that. Okay, now it's even. Like that. Yeah, what's going on with this hat? Aha, uh -huh. it's uh, when I tinted, I guess I covered the whole, covered the hole. So let's get that cleaned up here real quick. A little bit of solder wick. Now, when you're using solder wick, don't drag. You dab. If you drag, you can rip off the pad on the board, and then a whole new exciting things, more exciting work has to happen to get that fixed. Quarter of the way. Yeah, we can do it this way on this one. And we'll do. a little higher. Okay, there we go. Now we can flip it over. Ooh, I see I'm off the screen here. camera's just not focusing as good on this board as I would hope it would be. Well, I hope it's detailed enough you can see it. Okay, let's get the little ends cut off here. And the other one is mostly soldered down, so we'll leave it. There we go. Get that out of there. Okay. All right, the other thing to pay attention to on your bench, now I've got a lot of these little, these little uh, cut pieces laying around the bench. You wanna make sure every so often you clean those up. Because <clears throat> if you don't, they will eventually somehow magically jump into your project in an area you can't see. And the first time you power up the circuit, it's gonna let the smoke out or Hopefully not. It'll just not work. Simply not work. So let's do a little clean up here. All right. Okay. Next are the are the the capacitors. I don't think my bending tool opens that far. Okay. Now where'd that go? Ah, right here. I don't think it opens it. No. All right. So we will just have to guess. <clears throat> so mounting components on your boards. Um, another tip is always leave the values up if you can. Um, you don't want to do it like this because that's meaningless. So if you ever had to come in and repair something, uh, you want to know what the values are. So this needs to bend right about there. And the negative sign. It's kind of hard with the camera in the way, actually. Right about there. Now, I'm not going to leave the sharp corners in there. Actually, I'm going to pull it through a little bit. Curve this there. These just fit. I can tell from under the board that um, <laughs> the leads are just making it, and that's fine. That's all we need is just enough. <coughs> Bend that under there. There we go. 
So now we got our capacitor in place. You can see the, the value of it. And we do the same thing here. Don't be shy with your solder. This one we're going to clean up a little bit. It's not quite lined up right. We'll push it down on the board some more. There we go. That's better. <coughs> there we go. All right. a little bit. Okay. Next one. We will do C5. C5 fits right in here. Like so. So you're probably wondering how I got, how I, I marked the board prior to tearing off all the old components. And then right after that, when I was cleaning the board, I used acetone after I tinned it to clean off a lot of the stuff. And of course, I wiped off all my markings. But luckily, I had a photograph. I took a picture of the board. I took a picture of the board prior to dismantling it, so, okay, good, that's net minus side, positive side, everything's up, let's flip that one over, there we go, that's now down there, that's down there, back to more solder. Let's do C2 since we're on a roll with that one in that direction. Do the same thing. Here. Oops, backwards. Yeah, those lined up kind of nicely. This way. There we go. So that's all the all the horizontal ones. Now we got to two, do the two verticals.
I'm going to try a different light and see if this helps with the focus. Why are you focused so close, but not at this distance? Huh, crazy camera. All right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why this isn't very, why it's not focusing so well. All right. Well, this is what we'll have to live with here for the time being. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. <coughs> Maybe the light helps some. So we've got one more. Right here. Make sure we get it in the right orientation here. Kind of move. Uh, push, pull this down a little bit more. Okay. There we go. Okay. That's it for now. I'll get the boards redrilled. I'll redrill the extra set of holes that I forgot and uh, put the diode stack on. And after this, it's uh, it's off to testing it. So, but what I'd like to do, even if the board was completed today, I wouldn't test it. What I like to do <coughs> before first power on is to let it sit a few days and try and forget about it then come back double check the schematic which I'll have uh, and um, make sure everything's okay before applying power so that's it for me for now um, it, I haven't decided on a schedule yet for these uh, I would like to get to like maybe every other Saturday possibly for different projects um, none of this will be edited I don't have time for that. So the mistake you saw in the beginning, where I missed, where I missed uh, not drilling the extra holes for diodes, well, that's the way it goes, <coughs> and that's the way most most of my projects go. But that's where I think the learning are, happens is is when the mistakes are made, and you have to troubleshoot and figure out well why is this not working, uh, why did my diodes not fit in, things like that. That's when uh, the electronics starts to make sense. So you have a broken circuit. You tr you try and you figure out what's wrong with it. Because when you're trying to figure out what's wrong with it, it's forcing you to understand what's happening with that circuit. <coughs> so, anyways, that's all I have. Seven three. Thanks for. Uh, hopefully, I wasn't talking to myself, but hey, you never know. Seven three. Catch you next time.